And we're back, and it's comp one, two, three, and it's week 11, lesson 11, part two. Um, and the emergency has ended, so we're back. So we can do this kind of stuff. So one of the things we did, uh, you know, without recording, without the recording, is we kind of copied first name, last name, and these text boxes. I created this other text box and this label. I created the submit button. Of course, we named it appropriately. And I also have a, a group box that I've created just for fun. Um, with another label inside called you typed and a you typed um, um, a you typed text box that I've named appropriately. So you type text box. I'm just going to pin this for a second so we can see all of them. Uh, you type text box. This is my submit, which is submit button. Um, this lab this text box is called the last name text box, and this first name text box is called first name text box. All right, so all these things have been labeled uh, appropriately. And now, in, on the back end, I want to wire up this form. So when I click the submit button, it takes these two uh, values that are in the first name and last name text boxes and outputs them here in this text box, which is you type text box, as first name, space, and last name. So what I did was I went in, I double clicked, which created this um, submit button click event handler. And inside here, I said you type text box dot text, which is the text value or property, sorry of the U type text box is equal to, I'm assigning to it, the first name text box dot text plus a space and the last name text box dot text. Okay, cool. So that means if I run things and if, I'm, if I did things correctly and I didn't mess up and I run things, then when I type in my first name, so um, and my last name, which is really long, and I click submit, then I'm going to get my name in the text box. Okay, cool. Um, so it takes the values from these through the submit button, the submit button takes these values and dumps them out here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Output is the actual the output here on the top left corner or of the group box is just uh, the text value of the group box. Okay, so that's cool. Let's make this as a test. As this is, we're doing some uh, experiments here. Let's make the U type text box read only. Because right now, look what I can do. I can go in here and go blah, 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 right? And mess it all up. And I don't want that. I want whatever's in there to come out and I can't touch it, right? How do I do that? Well, um, you, write, you, you click on this thing, you go to properties, right? And I go to my read only property and I change my read only property from false to true. Oh, man, look what it did. It made it all dull like. Now, my text box all grayed out, right? Well, I don't want that. So I want to make it look like a text box that's not a normal text box. So I want you to go to the border style of the text box and change it from fix 3D. I want you to change it to fingal, sorry, fix single, fingal, fix single, right? And I want you to change the back color property from control if I, uh, to uh, control light light, if you have that. Back color property from control to control light light, if you have that. Yeah? Light light. All right, cool. So we got this situation going on, right? All right, so it looks a little different than these text boxes, yeah? These text boxes look like they're receded in here, like a little 3D thing. This looks like it's fixed. Okay, let's try it now and see if it does anything. All right, so right click, mix it, make things work. I put my name in here for, uh, wait, Tom. And, da -da. and I click submit and it works, but this time I can't do anything, right? And I can't change what's in there. I can see what's in there, but the property of the text box it makes it read only. And so now I can't change what's in there. It's only read only. Hey, what if I want to make it so that you can't even type in there? Like you can't even like click inside there at all, right? Well, I can go back to properties. I click on the text box. I can go back to properties. And let's take a look at other options. So I've got, these are all my properties here. I've got like accept return, accepts tab, allow drop, anchor, causes validation, cursor, uh, doc, enabled, um, hmm, enabled, four color, generate member, uh, generate member, uh, hide selection, uh, let's see, lines, locked. Hey, what happens if I lock it? If I just go locked like this? Well, that doesn't actually do anything from, from a uh, control perspective. Like when I run this thing again, it doesn't do anything really. It's just the same thing. 
right? If I go blah, 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 la, 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 and then add it in, it'll do it, right? So it's not really, and I can still type in there, and I can still highlight in there and stuff too. But what lock does is kind of neat. If I'm designing my form, if I lock my controls, it prevents me from doing something like this. Look, I can't, I can't drag this control around now once it's, once it's in there, right? So it helps me when I'm designing, because if I do here, I can accidentally do one of these, right? So if I want to lock my control, right, if I right-click onto it, I can lock my control, right? I can lock a bunch of my controls by using my shift button, right? And I want to lock all of these controls so I can't change them after they've been, um, that's unlock, I think. Let me go back and lock. Now they're all locked. So if I actually move them around, if I try and do something with them, they don't move because I've locked them all. So it's locked from, from designing, not locked from anything else. Like it'll actually run. So this is from a design perspective. So let's leave them all locked for now. Okay, so we talked about locking and locking controls. And um, okay, so that's not really it. From a, I can still highlight it and I can still, I can still uh, you know, kind of select it. Here's my, I'm selecting my U type text box. Hmm, let's see what else I can do. I don't want, I never want, you know, uh, people to, to kind of, you know, Type inside of there. What can I do? Well, tab index is zero. Tab stop is true. Hey, tab stop is true. I want to take this tab stop away so that way it's false. So that way it doesn't go there anymore. Okay, let's try that out. Tab stop is false. So uh, uh, it's too long. And then click submit. And oh man, I can still type in there. It doesn't go there, right? Which is good. Tab stop is false should be there, right? But it still allows me to type in there, so that doesn't do it. Hmm. Text align tag text. Huh? Enabled. enabled. Yeah, there's another problem with that though. Let's try that out. So here's enabled, and I'll make this false. Okay. Now, luckily, we've already changed the color of this 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 little box. Otherwise, it'd be really gray. <laughs> you wouldn't touch it all. Let's try it out and see what it looks like. Okay. Cool. I now I can't type there at all. But let's see if I if my my stuff works. Now, Tom Smith and submit. That's cool, but I can't, I can't even type in there at all. So enabled takes care of kind of a couple things. It stops my read, you know, from, uh, you know, I can't type in there. I can't change it. It's read. It's not read only. It doesn't have to be read only, but enable actually stops me from making any changes. Okay, cool. Uh, what about if I wanted to change my cursor around when I hover over my text box? I want to change my cursor. What can I do? I go to cursor. It's pretty simple, right? Instead of I beam, you know, I want to make it so that it's just like no, <laughs> click no, right? Now let's run this thing and see what happens for my cursor. So I go over it. I'm trying to type. Oh, hey, wait a minute. I can, I can still. It doesn't do anything. Hold on a second. Um, oh, um, da da da, and submit. What happened? How come it doesn't change my cursor to something else? Any ideas? It disabled, baby. That's why. <laughs> if I change my, it has to be enabled. If I go and uh, change my disabled to enable, let's try this out. So enable is false. Let's try enable true. See if that does it, right? Let's see if that makes a difference here. Hold on. I hover over. Oh, man, it makes it look like it's so, because it's not disabled anymore, right? Still can type in there, though. But it's kind of silly, isn't it? Right? So it kind of works so that way my cursor changes as I hover over. It's done. But there's some built-in controls, what I'm showing you for, for Microsoft. Microsoft gives you some built-in control for this kind of stuff. I'm going to go back to my properties here. I'm fooling around with text boxes here today. Um, I'm going to go back to disabled is, or enabled is equal to false. Enabled is equal to false. Okay, cool, cool. When I click my submit button, here's the new problem. When I click my submit button, after I've entered my name and my first name and last name, I want to um, I want to disable these two controls. How do I do that? So my first name text box and my last name text box. Any idea how I would do that? La 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 la. Ask that someone else has to answer, right? You know how to do it. How would I do that? I want to disable my first name text box and my last name text box. What would I do? It's part of my properties. Right, so if I've asked you to do something with a property, I just need to say when I'm. So I'll go back to my my control here, right? So when I, after I type everything in, 
right? I want to disable everything, right? So I want to say something like this. My first name text box dot enabled is equal to false, right? And the same thing for my last name text box. So let's see the result of that. Last name text box dot enabled is equal to false. Okay, so last name, first name, clickety clack. Right? And if I run it now, once I type in, once I hit the submit button, doesn't matter what's in here. If I type the submit button, oh, those things go gray, baby. Yeah? They go gray. I can't do anything anymore. They're disabled. So is this one. But these ones look gray, which is kind of what I wanted. Okay, cool. That's okay, but you know what? There's nothing in there. How do I test? How do I test to see if something has been done, if it's been changed? How do I how do I test for that? Right? So if I want to see that there's something in there, can I check to see if there's if it's not null? Probably. So I can make a test, right? I could say if right my you my first name and last name text box, wait. I get checked if both of them are null. So that means I they're required almost. Like if they're if they're if they're empty, I'm not, I'm not going to be happy, right? Kind of doing some user validation here. Should I be doing it here, or should I be doing it in the in the text boxes? It's a good question. Well, let's try this here anyway. So I'm going to say uh, first name text box is not equal to null. Wait, dot text, right? Because I'm I'm checking for the text property not equal to null, right? I want to check for that and, uh-oh, here's our and. We've never done an and before in this class. And, right, the last name text box. Wait, how come, how come we're not finding my last name text box? Dot text, last name text box dot text is not equal to Blah, blah then how come I didn't find my last name text box oh there it is uh, it just took too long um, so if this is true if it's not null then I'm gonna say you typed blah 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 right so let's just take this out take all this stuff out and put it all in here yes did you write that statement about the um, array brackets? <laughs> no sure. it'll give you it'll give you an error I don't recommend I highly don't recommend. It could cause problems later on. Please redo the outer brackets and the inner brackets. It's just easier. I, yes, you're talking about the inner brackets that surround things. You know what? I just feel more comfortable when you use expressions like this, and they work in all languages as opposed to not using them, and they work in some languages but not others. So this is the proper form. Okay. If I run this thing now, let's see if I run this thing. Is there's a break? If I click submit. Hey, it detected that there's something. So if I type some stuff over here, but not in here, click submit. It doesn't disable. It doesn't print everything. And if I type in both things, then I go click submit, and then it detects them and prints them up. Right. So it's kind of checking to see some validation to see that I've got something in there other than nothing. That's what it's doing. Makes sense. And I did that with this, with this if statement here. Just like uh, let me just unpin this for a second. This toolbox, so we can see the whole screen. Right. So this if first name text box dot text is not equal to null or not equal to empty an empty string, because that's what it starts off with, and last name text box dot text is not equal to so both those things conditions have to be true in order for me to submit my form. Make sense? Okay. Let's go back into my input form, and I want to I want to go back to my toolbox for a second. And I want to pin it. And I want you to unlock your submit button for a second. Unlock it. And I want you to copy it and paste it. And I want you to line it up with the, the right side of this form, right? And maybe let's move this submit button to the, to the left as well. So it's like this, OK? This time. Just moving it around. Okay? It almost looks like. A cyclops, eh? Has like an eye, nose hair, the nose, you know, thing, and then the mouth, eh? You think? So it kind of looks. This the U type would be like a mustache, right? To the, 
Anyway, sorry, just you know, it's a little bit. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking in abstract terms. Oh, anyways, uh, so my submit button is cool, and I've got this other button here now. I want to change this submit button from my submit to a cancel button, or reset. Maybe reset would be better. So reset button. There we go. And change the the actual text to reset down here. What did I do that? Why did I move? Why did I copy the submit button instead of make a new button? Drag and drop. How come? How come? How come? Huh? It keeps all my formatting, right? I don't have to do the formatting, change it to 14, resize the button so it fits off, so it fits my text. I don't have to do that. If I've already formatted a control that I want to use, I just copy and paste that same control and rename it. It's easier. Okay? All right, cool. I got my reset button here. And now with my reset button, when I double click, here's my problem. I want to double click my reset button to create my event handler. But when I click my reset button, when my form is active, when I'm in runtime, I want to reset the values, so I'm going to wipe out the values in first name and last name. I want to uh, enable these controls and wipe out the values in you typed. Make sense? Very simple. Let's do that. So it's, in order for me to start, what do I do, Christina? Double, Double click on reset. reset button. Okay, so here's my new event handler. Oh, it's kind of the opposite of what I did over here. Let's just unpin these for a second so we have maximum size here. And okay, so I want to say... I want to reset everything, so I want to say a couple things. One is my first name text box dot text, right? I want to make that equal to nothing, right? And my last name text box dot text dot text is equal to nothing. Okay, cool. And now that I've done that, I want to make my first name text box dot text uh, enabled is equal to true. And my last name text box dot text enabled is equal to true. So I'm going to re-enable them. And you know what? My U type text box, U type text box dot text, I'm just doing it in order, is equal to blah blah. It's kind of a reset button, right? Would that make sense? I could, but I don't want to. I want to use this smarty. I don't want to because there's a couple reasons why I don't. Um, so I want you to understand how this all works, right? So I want to kind of reset the, the, this, this thing back to normal with this reset button click. Okay, let's save everything and run it and see if it works. So, okay, I type in, and here's my, you know, John, oops, John Smith, right? I click submit. It goes to the right, it highlights the right button, right? Submit. And it goes here, and then, oh man, it wasn't John Smith I wanted to, to submit. I wanted to, to do something else. I reset, and now I can do, you know, Mary Jane, right? Ask me again, I'll say the same, right? And then here we go, submit, and now I'm here. And if I reset, it goes back to them, right? So very simple functionality with my buttons. I submit. So I'm controlling my controls at runtime with my button clicks. Um, and I'm programming all that functionality in right here uh, in my code in design time, right? So this is all my code that I've written, very simple, right? Uh, all I'm, I'm doing is modifying properties of my controls um, in here, and that's what I'm doing. But what about if you have a value like, you know, um, an age or some kind of other value that's a number as opposed to text, right? And um, I want to check to see that the number is greater than, right, a certain level. Like, for example, you know what? This input, I only want people who are over the age of 18 to be able to submit, right? Otherwise, it's not going to happen, right? You're too young, right? If you're under the age of 18, you know, you can't watch or can't do whatever you're going to do. Sorry. <laughs> what was I saying there? <laughs> uh, you know, so... Um, you know, you need to have some kind of age in here as well. We forgot that text box. My client wanted an age and I forgot it. What do I do, right? So first of all, let's make some room. How do I do that? I'm going to kind of highlight these two things. Here's my selection. Just by highlighting these two things. Oh, they're locked, aren't they? Oh, no, they're not. That's good. That's good. Okay. I'm pulling them up. I'm going to pull them up a little more. Here we go. And I want to add in the same thing. So I'm going to copy the last text box in here. Copy and paste, and I'm going to kind of try and line it up. Oh, it, it didn't work out. How do I line up everything 
instead of lining it up by I, how do I line up everything automatically? Well, if I want to line up this text box with this stuff, right, I can click just on the text box itself. Actually, let's just click both for a second. Just curious. It'll be more like this, right? And if you notice the controls up here, these are alignment controls. Well, these are cool, but if I click one of these now, it's going to do one of those. That's not what I want. Um, what I meant was, you know, I want to move this control to align with this one. So I type, I click this one first, then this one, and then I click my align controls up here on the top, and it goes bam. Right? I could also do the same thing with this one. So I'm going to line it with this one and this one, and I want to line it up, so I'm going to go bam. Right? So now they're all lined up. So if I want to do it like that way, I can do that. Um, how about spacing between everything. I want them to have the same spacing. What do I do? Well, best thing to do is to do one of these, highlight all of them. And there is a, a spacing control over here on the size, which is make vertical spacing equal. Let's see if that works. No. How come that didn't work? I got some other issues going on. That's why. So I'm going to undo that. It's okay to do it with like controls. Like, for example, if I do one of these, Right, and I want to do my spacing equal like this, it'll do it. See how that worked? And I might be able to do the same thing with these ones. So I can kind of do these ones and then go make spacing equal. Right, that's okay. But doing it all together like that, that's bad. So again, these alignment controls really help out when it comes to uh, aligning your form a little nicer, making it look nicer so that they're equally spaced. Huh? Okay, cool. This last name, let's change the last name so it says age. Right? For now. Well, maybe we'll do date of birth later on. <laughs> That's even more crazy. Right? For now, we'll just make it called, we'll call it age. Right? Oh, wait a minute. It's way out here. How do I line this label now to this label? I just showed you how to do it. It's not the other way. You have to type, type click on the first label that you want to align to. This one. Then shift click on the next label. Then click this alignment button on the top. Right align. And that aligns nice. If you did it by eye, you could do it too, but it would be more challenging. Right? Sometimes you have to do it by alignment. Okay, cool. So first name, last name, and age. These are good things. And now my age is a pretty big text box. I'll leave it the way it is for now. Um, I want to listen for numbers. I want to listen for numbers. Now here's where the funky, funky stuff gets in. What if a user types in a le like a letter? Right? That's not going to be, I can't test for age anymore, right? Didn't we learn something about, don't say it, don't say it. Didn't we learn something in order for us to check, huh? Exception handling, I like that. So what do I use to wrap my text box around in order for me to do that? How do I check? I can do a try catch, but the thing is, it's happening at, it's happening at runtime, right? So I can submit, and if this is wrong, I need to pop up a message that says, hey, something's wrong, right? How do I do that? What kind of, how do I pop up a message that says, this is wrong, right? Well, there's actually a, a built-in uh, control that you can't see, right, uh, called a message box, right? So let's see how that's coded first before I pop up the message that says, this is wrong, right? Um, if I just type anywhere in here just to see if, I'm going to type it just to, to see if I can pull up the message box control uh, IntelliSense. I'm going to type message box. If you notice, message box is actually a, a class, right? Can I say show and then whatever the message box is? And I could. Message box is a class. It's a static class, actually. And if I type in my, my message box show, let's try uh, done, right? So we showed a, after you're kind of submitted, it's done, right? Let's see what that does. So I'm going to right click, and then when I submit something, oh wait, didn't work. Uh, let's type in my name. So John Smith. Oh wait, what happened? How come it jumped over here? I'm going to fix that. Uh, age uh, 52, not me. Submit. Done. So this little message box, almost like an alert box, comes up, right? That says done. Right? Press OK. All right, so message box. That's the way you do a message box. Reset still. Hey, what happened? Didn't reset my age. And program that, right? Um, 
message boxes allow us to do two things. One, it's a modal control that comes up, a modal form that comes up that overlays on top of the form we're working on. Modal means can't do anything with the form until I click my, 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 my alert, just like it does in the, in, when you, on the web. If you go on the web and go, you know, you have JavaScript and you go alert with JavaScript, it pops up and you got to click that away before you can continue, which is a really annoying, annoying thing. It's terrible. From a design perspective, it's the worst thing you can put in your forms. But for now, we're going to use that, right? So we're going to say this. Um, so messagebox.show is the way is what we're going to do. That's the that's the way we're going to tell the user that he's entered the wrong stuff, right? And we're going to test for that when he uh, clicks a submit button. If there's a number, or uh, if there's a letter inside, or if the if we're trying to parse the age as an example, then, and if it fails, we're going to pop up an alert that says, hey, try again. That, that didn't work, right? How do we do that? Remember, it's all try-catch. We learned this try-catch stuff before. It's, a, it's a, a refresher. I'm not going to do try-catch tomorrow, by the way. It's no try-catch, okay? So that would be, like, crazy. Um, okay, so, well, one thing is, um, I'm testing for my first name text box is nothing and my last name text box is nothing but I also want to check to see if my age text box now did I make hey, did I did I name that my control this would be bad if I did it huh hold on that would be bad hey my age text box I gotta rename that age text box and all oh, my labels got to be changed too just for just to be appropriate here age label Right, so I change my age text box, um, save it all, and go back here and say my well and here's my third and and my age text box dot text is not equal to I want to test for all of them is not equal to this, so all these have to be filled in, or else you know what I'm not going to submit my form it won't allow me to, right. Um, so you typed is interesting. You typed text is this first name, last name, and then we're going to add into this. We're going to say plus, I'm going to change it right now for a second, plus, comma, and then age, right? Plus, and then um, age text box dot text. I'm not changing anything else. I'm not testing for what I want to yet. I don't know what happened here. Oh yeah, it's not uh, single quotes. It's got to be double quotes. There we go. Um, and but I used single quotes here and it worked. Look, how come? How come? How come? Because it's a single character, right? Let's just to make it to make it nice and and to keep consistent. We'll just use double quotes. So double quotes, last name, text box, age, a little bit of a space, comma, and age text box dot text. Okay, cool. Uh, I haven't changed anything else, just that. So let's see, now we're testing for all three conditions. All right, uh, so first name, John Smith, Smith. Nope, didn't work. John Smith, my age is, you know, uh, 20, right? Smith. Okay, cool, that worked. And, you know, you type John Smith, age 20, right? Reset. We're good. So that works. Oh, wait, how come my, my age didn't reset? Mwah. I didn't program that in. I got to do that over here. I got to say first name, and then I did all my first name stuff, and my age text box, age text box dot uh, text uh, is equal to this. And you know what I also didn't do? I didn't lock my age text box. I could have changed it later, so I'm going to do that too. I'm going to say age text box dot enabled is equal to false. I'm going to do that too, right? Why not? And I'll change this back here to uh, age text box in my reset button click. Age text box dot enabled is equal to true. Okay, makes sense. So I've kind of taken care of my age text box. Let's run it one more time. See how it works. We're at that point now. Just made some changes. So John. Smith, age, oh man, how come it goes to the submit button? My tabs are all messed up. How do I re-tab everything? Well, 
because I had this text box afterwards. I mean, my design decision, I didn't plan things out right, right, right properly. And then I have to replan that. How do I do that? Well, each box has a, in the properties, I'm going to pin this for a second, it has a tab index, tab index. So if you notice, this tab index is one. Well, it starts at zero. So two things here. My Even my my uh, labels have tab indexes, right, or indices. But I can make it so that my, so it never goes here. Remember, what's, what's the thing that tells me that I can't tab here, right? Don't tab here. Hmm? It it's it basically allows me if I go to here to this one it gives me tab stop is true here there's no tab stop is true because they won't go here anyway so it goes zero one here's the tab index right two three seven oh that's bad so maybe it should be four four five right submit would be uh, six seven six seven and I don't want my tab to go here because I want it to be read only right so this would be a false tab stop and who cares what this says here we'll make it six seven and we'll make this eight so you can't go there okay cool so I've read done my tab indices here so that they they align let's run this one more time and see if it works so again type John tab smith tab was properly placed right 30 tab submit tab reset shift tab shift tab shift tab shift tab goes all the way back up the line just like you would normally see a control to do it and it will miss this one because i don't allow tab uh tab stop is false yeah i it's part of it right uh you don't really need it but it's it aligns the tabs um, I can't really click on these labels. I can't even highlight them. They're actually read-only, right? Um, but there are some cases when you design forms that you have control over clicking on these labels too, right? Okay, so John Smith uh, thing, and I click Submit. Here it is. Reset. Everything resets back to normal. Okay, are we good so far? So these are good, but it means I can put in any value I want, like negative one, right? So I can type a J S, right? Negative one and submit, and then that'll work, right? That's not cool. That shouldn't be allowed, right? We need some, we need some validation here. This can't be right. How do we do that? Well, this is where we, this is the complexity, right? So we're testing now. So this is true. So it's not, we know in order for us to get all this stuff entered here, to get into this piece, that we know that these things aren't, aren't empty, that they're actually something, that's the first check we make. Okay, cool. Um, I want to parse the, um, or convert my age into a number, right? And to that way I can check to see if the number is greater than 18. So only people greater than 18 can submit this form for whatever reason. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink, say no more. Um, anyways, but, so if that's true, right, if we can check for, uh, for people who are greater than 18, how do we do that? Well, we got to do one of these. we got to say, remember that, first of all, all text values are strings in every control, right? Which means we always have to convert to whatever value we want. Age, we want an integer value, so we're going to have to convert to integer, right? And we're going to have to have some kind of variable uh, to con to check theoretically right so we'll say we'll kind of create a local variable here um, and we'll make this this of type integer right and it's going to be uh, we'll say age lowercase right and we'll set it to uh, a default value of zero right so we're going to check to see if we're going to convert first right so when we say age is equal to convert, right, after we've got all our inputs, right, instead of view typed, this is going to happen before you typed. I'm going to do this actually ahead of there. Convert and then 2 int 32, right, 2 int 32 um, is what we want to do, right? So I want to take my age, convert 
into 32, something that's going to be converted is going to be what? My age text box, right, dot text. That's what I'm converting to int32. So that's what I'm going to try and do. Now this is going to throw up an error, right? If the person entered in a value that is not an integer, like for example, some kind of decimal value, or they're going to enter in something else, right? So let us cut this out. I'm going to go here before I do this U type stuff because that doesn't make any sense. And at the top it says, try and convert the age. Well, I need to wrap this in a try catch block. Remember, the try catch block shorthand is try and then tab tab, right? Try tab tab will give you the try catch blocks, uh, catch block. And then, of course, I'm going to try and do this piece here inside these, this area here, inside these braces. So it's going to say, try and do this. If not, then throw up an error. And we're going to have exception. We're going to call this uh, error, right? We're going to say the, what the, whatever the error is. And we're going to say message box dot show, message box dot show. And we're checking the age, right? So invalid age. Okay, that's the first thing we're going to do. Okay, cool. But I want the user to be taken back because I don't want this to happen. I don't want, um, I don't want the, all this stuff here to happen. Enable, blah, 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 whatever. All this stuff here to happen. I don't want any of it to happen if my age is messed up. Right, so what do I do? I'm going to take all this as well. And I'm going to put it inside my try catch block, but underneath the age. Because that's the first thing that'll fail. Right, so my age will fail first. And that's why I'm checking for it before it does any of this disabling stuff. And otherwise, it's going to say invalid age, and that's good. But I want to give the user a little bit of, of stuff, something to, to tell him that he needs to enter it, enter the value again, right? Well, the trick to us when we do Windows Forms is we want to highlight whatever he's typed in there in the age, highlight, you know, the, the age, right? How do I do that? Well, there's actually a, um, a property. Let's go to the properties. I want to make sure that this age is selected, right? So the way I do I do is I check the age property, this text box, and can I do I have a selected or some kind of option here? And you know what? It doesn't seem to be, you know, um, there's no way of knowing if this is selected. And this is something that you need to remember how to do, right? As opposed to look here in the properties. Okay. So how do we do that? How do we select all? I want to select everything in this text box. Okay, cool. So I'm going to say, well, my age text box, right, dot text, dot select, oh, that doesn't do it. Hmm, age text box dot select all. Here it is, here's select all. Select all, right, is a method that I can run, right? So which means that whatever's inside the text box, I want the whole thing to be selected. It's going to come up blue. Right, so I wanted them to redirect to that age, that text box again, and I'm not going to allow you to submit until you put in a proper age. Does that make sense? Let's check that out. Let's run it. See what happens. So I'm going to go John Smith, and my age is minus one. Oh, that's a wait. It's a value. That's that's valid. Uh, my age is gobbledygook, and I click submit. Man, invalid age, and I come back, and oh. What happened? It's back here. Keep doing that, but my age text box didn't get selected. That's what I wanted to happen. I wanted it to look like this, right? Well, it's not just that. In my age text box, I can also do, first of all, let's go back. Um, age text box. There's so many, again, you know, we can talk about just the text box control all day. It's actually, there's so many properties and methods. H text box, and if I look down here, um, I can see that there is there are several different things we can do here. So selected length, selection length, selection start. I have uh, tab index. You know, these are all the ones, two string, validated. What I want is my focus, right? My focus to be 
to kind of set on this thing. So lost focus is an event. These are little lightning bolts here, if you notice, that come up when I do the dot. It's That's the event that I can check for. Lost focus, location changed, margin changed, margin. But what I really want to look for um, is when I want to set my focus. I want to set my focus. So maybe I can do that. Maybe I can just type in set focus and no, set bounds, focus, 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 right? It says, sets the input focus to the control. <laughs> okay, can I do that? Let's call it, let's try this out and run it. And I'm going to type in some really weird stuff. So John uh, Smith. And blah, blah. submit. No, oh. ah, All right. So now it highlights it. So I type in the right value, like a number, like negative one. That's a number. That'll work. That's wrong, right? So we know it's a number now. We can convert it, right? We can convert it because it's an invalid age. Is still a problem, right? This is an exception we're creating. It says my invalid age, I can convert to, to, to integer, right? Is there another type of, um, instead of integer being age, because age can be negative and positive, is there another type of um, a positive integer only? Can I have another, is there another data type like that? There is, there is, there is. Unsigned int is what it's called, right? Because you don't want to sign. It means I can't be zero though, I can be zero age, right? But it's got to be, I'm going to take care of this anyway with my um, age greater than uh, than 18 thing, right? So I, I enter my age, right? I check this out, right? This thing here, and I want it if my age is not, uh, you know, if it's not right, right? If it's not greater than 18, then I don't want to do this stuff, right? I want to... Actually, I want them to go back uh, into their um, their text box again and redo this, redo the focus and the select all, right? It's not an error necessarily, right? I mean, I could create my own exception handler. I don't want to do that um, because it's complex for some. But what I want to do is I want to test to see if the age is greater than 18. If it is, then move on. If it's not, then re-highlight this and do this again. So how do I do this? So I say if, I know it's already converted, so I can check. I can say if age is greater than 18, or greater than or equal to 18, I'm okay with 18, right? Then we can do this. Else, anything else, right? That's the catch-all. Then do this, which is, instead of invalid age, say message box show right, which is um, age must be uh, greater than, uh, a little greater than, greater than 18, greater than or equal to 18. <laughs> Why not? Makes no sense, but sure. Message box will show age must be greater than or equal to uh, 18. That's almost like I'm showing what, what it's going to be. And then, of course, I want to do all this again, right? So I'm going to take all this, put that in here, and um, this is my test, right? So if I've passed my test, then I want to do all this. So all this goes in here, right? So I can continue. It's another level of, of, of conditional statements, right? So I'm testing to see, first of all, I'm doing this try. This try catch is saying any errors are because of age. Chances are, right? If my age is greater than 18, then I can do this. Otherwise, I put a little message box out there and the user is redirected back to that special space where my age has to be greater than 18. Okay, let's try this again. So I run it. I type in my, my name, John Smith, and my age is minus 1. Submit. Should get a different error, right? Age must be greater than or equal to 18. And now my age is highlighted. If I tip, put in some gobbledygook in there, it says invalid age. Okay, and if I go into, if I say 18 or higher, then I'm good to go. Right? Some simple validation. Very simple. How about if my age is too high? Like if I'm an old geezer, like 
it's only from ages 18, you know, uh, as an example, to 60, right? Because if you're old, older than 60, you can't come for whatever reason, right? Uh, you can fill in the blank there. But anyways, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't do it. If you're eight, 18, to 18 and, and 60, you're good. Outside of 60, well, it'll be the same thing. I would just add in another. My check would be if this and that, right? That two range, right? Okay, so we'll leave that alone for you to figure out um, if you want to put that limited. What about this? What about the value, like how many characters, the minimum length of characters here for these? How do I check that? Because that's like, I'm checking how many characters have been entered. It's a different thing, right? So this is the next step. So I've done this. This is, we're good here, right? It's age greater than 18 is good. But now I want to check to see that my first name and last name text boxes are greater than... I don't know what. Two? Because I think two is the minimum, right? Because otherwise it's like kind of weird, right? Because you can have like a, you know, maybe the guy's name would be like, I don't know, his last name is Go and his first name is Hi. Hi, Go, right? Some, and I've heard names, all kinds of things. Even in Greek, there's there's names like that. Um, so, you know, there's there's different possibilities. And then there's, there's, you know, the name of the length can be whatever it's going to be, right? But the short name can't be lower less than two characters. So how do I check that? Well, remember that it's strength, right? The text value is a strength. So therefore, I can use the length property for it, right? So I can do the same thing. I can say if either one of those things, if, and that's interesting too. We're checking up here to see that they're greater than or equal to this, right? Maybe would it, wouldn't it be better to say that this Thing here must be greater than or equal to two because age but that means age would kind of work because 18 is what we're looking for right um, I want to look for 18 or more not a, not a hundred right so that's cool so instead of putting it here which makes logical sense I could put it in there and check it but I could also put it here instead of like not equal to this I could say if text dot length right is greater than or equal to 2, right? That means it's not empty, right? Which is also is kind of a good thing, right? So I can do the same thing here, right? So dot length is greater than or equal to 2. And then we'll just leave this so that age has to be greater than something. It's got to be not blank, right? So we'll leave this condition the same because we've already tested for age down here. Okay. Let's check this out and see if it works. So I go here and I do one of these, da da da, and it doesn't mean anything in the names, but I know I can do this and it'll work, right? Because I can totally put in names like that. I can reset. I can reset, and if I go to LJ1 and I try and submit, it's not going to let me. But it also won't give me any anything back. It won't say, "Hey, what's going on with you, buddy?" Right? Your, your letters are too small. You're, that's the problem, right? So yes, we certainly could do this, right? And it would stop us from submitting, but it won't give the user any feedback, right? Because we're doing this if this grandiose if statement, and we know that one some condition failed, but we don't know what condition failed, and it's hard to test for that because any one of these three conditions, one, two, three, could have failed for us to have a problem. See? So that maybe that's not the best solution. So we're just going to put this back to the way it was for a second. So now undo, undo, undo. Although that's what I'm going to do here for my test. I'm just trying to, trying to stop you guys from thinking ahead of myself and going, hey, how about if you put the not equal to up here? That'd be cool. Yes, it is. But it won't do what we want it to do. Let's continue. So I'm going to say if, we know what to say now, right? If the, the length, as an example, first name and last name, we'll do both this time, right? If first name, uh, first name text box dot text dot length, right, is greater than or equal to two, right, and we'll do the same thing for last name text box. Just going to copy and paste this one, and we'll put these in, in, in outer brackets. So I'm testing. I do another little test in here. So not only is it not blank, but it's also greater than or equal to two. This is last name text box. Both of them have to be this way. Then we can get a little message going. If we want to be really specific, we can make it another one. Else, 
right? Cool. We can't do all this now unless this is true. And otherwise, if it's not true, we're going to give focus to my uh, first name. Go back to my first name. Say, because we don't know which one is not true, right? I could test for that, by the way. If it's this, then focus on this. If it's this, then focus on this. If it's both, do both, right? I could with another if statement inside the else, right? Like say, if it's this one that's not, not greater than two, right? Then it's this one, right? Um, but for now, let's just put up a message that says this kind of idea. It's message box that show, and we'll highlight the first one. We'll highlight the, uh, we'll make, we'll make, maybe we'll, we can't highlight both of them because highlighting both of them makes no sense, right? So message box dot show, and then what we got to put in here is um, instead of age must be greater than 18, we're going to say first name and last name must, must be greater than two. It's too short. First name, first and last name, or how about a first and or <laughs> and or last name? I'm cheating, right? Last names are too short, right? It's a little message box that comes up. Okay, let's check this out now. See if it finally has some focus. So there's my one and. Uh, put it. Oh, hey, that's nothing we can test for. Numbers, first names and last names shouldn't have numbers. It should be off. It should be just strings only, right? That's another thing we can test for. See what I'm saying? All the user validation crap because the user can just try and mess you up, right? Uh, first name is going to be T, and then J, and then age is 30, and submit, and we should have that message that says first and or last names are too short, and but it highlighted my 30, so that's not cool. Um, I forgot to do. Instead of my age text box, it shouldn't be that. It should be my first name text box that I want to highlight again. I can only highlight one box at a time because it makes sense that my focus is where I'm highlighting. So I'm going to go kind of back here to the first name text box. But my second name text box, my last name text box, not highlighted, which is kind of weird. It's not a great control that I'm setting up here. So JT30 submit highlights the J, right? So I can start typing here again without re, you know, kind of backspacing, right? Um, and that's cool. That's the same kind of setup. Well, isn't it that we're doing kind of the same things over and over again? Look at here's my message box. Here's my message box. Here's my message box. That almost requires a method, right? Because they're the same exact things over and over again. Definitely a topic of another day because this requires us to detect which box and which control, and then we have to test for the type of control, whether it's one or the other, and it's not so easy to do. There's ways of doing it. Um, for example, we know that the text box, um, it doesn't have a name, right, property, but we do have an ID for the text box, but we don't know if it's first name text box or whatever, and we'd have to check for different ones in order for that particular control to be focused on. Right? So there's some challenges here. It's not so easy as you think. It sounds easy, but not cool. All right, so we've done this thing here and saying that if it's true, then we can continue. Well, then if it's not true, then we can continue. We can continue this along, keep going, by the way. I can keep going deeper. Like, for example, if my first name text box dot length is greater than two, I would take this out. And only for my first name text box, then we can continue. Otherwise, it'll say my first name text box is too short. And then I'll do inside there another if statement that says if my second name text box, my last name text box is not two, then do this, and then we'll do you know we'll have another message that says your second your last name text box is too short. If they're both too short, then it'll go to the first one because it'll it'll stop on the first error, right? And the second one will be not cool. But what if what if you want to go? What if I want to tab in? So I I I kind of tab forward and tab back every time I tab back and forth in my controls. When I tab back and forth, what am I doing? I'm gaining focus. When I'm gaining focus on one of those two controls, I want to highlight all the text that's inside the next control. Example of this would be this. So I'm running it, and I type in John Smith, right, and age of 30, and then I tab back, but it goes to the end, right? So when I tab back or tab forward to age 30, 
right? I want 30 to be highlighted. How do I do that? It's an event, right? Because now I'm, I, something else is happening. I have to detect whether a control has focus. And if it has focus, then I want the whole control to be highlighted, right? How do I do that? So I can double click on a control like this one, right? And if you notice, it says text changed. Well, that's not really the event that I want, right? It's not my text change event that I want. So let's go back and I'm gonna go back to properties and the lightning bolt. And I wanna get rid of this first name text box text changed event, delete it and click away, go back to my code, it's gone. See how it's gone? Um, but I, however, I do want to do something with this text box, but it's not that event. It's something to do with focus. And here's all the events in the lightning bolt, right, that tells us. So if I look through this, it says font changed. I got an enter, a leave, right? Um, I got a key down, mouse move, right? Tab stop changed, tab index changed, style changed, validated, validating, visible changed. Is there something that gives me focus, man? Come on, right? So how do I know that this thing is selected, if you will? Steps tab change, border style, binding, keep looking, key down, key leave, leave. How about an enter? Ah. Now this isn't mouse enter. This is mouse enter, so it's not a mouse event. It's an enter event. So when I enter this text box, right, then all the controls, everything that's in here is highlighted. Right? Okay, cool. So here's what I want. So I want to double click on this enter for this control. Double click. Okay, it creates this first name text box enter event. So when I enter the text box, what do I want to do? I want to say that, now I know I have, I have focus, so I'm just going to say first name text box dot select all. Right? So what that does just highlights everything. So when I when I enter the text box, it selects everything. Right? Okay, cool. Uh, I want to do the same thing for this one. I go to properties, I go to enter, see if this works. And then I go to last name text box dot enter or select all. And you don't want to do the same thing with age. See if that works. So age, properties, and I go to go to enter and double click on the enter, and it's going to say age text box dot select all. So whenever I move around my controls, my form, whenever I'm highlighting and moving through, yes? That's what I'm doing. Tab yeah, well, when I pre oh, the tab button. Yeah. yeah, but where's the tab going? Right, so you have to know where the the, the, the next tab is. Sway so whatever when it gains when it gains focus, it's based on the tab index. Right, so the tab index is going to follow my my the way I've set up my tab index. When I gain when I enter, it's going to highlight the control. Every time I enter that control, it's going to highlight it, the text inside of it. Right. No, just tab. Enter means if it's entered, I'm going into the control, not enter the enter key. All right. So if I right, if I try this out, let's see. So if I go here and I start, type John Smith, and I go back, it highlights it now. See? So I can take Tom Smith. Oh, Smith doesn't have to be that. It's got to be something else. And then you know, age 17. Oh wait, it's not 17 anymore. It's you know, 18. Right? And I'm good to go. See how it highlights? I'm using my enter event. An enter means when I'm entering into the control. When I'm shifting focus. From, a, uh, from the control into that control, then my enter event fires. Okay. I think it's a good place to break. Um, I could, I could. That's another thing, right? Let's break for this one though.